As I've been doing recently today, I am coupling the words of the New Testament with those from the Old Testament, and I'm coupling the praise of the angels with Psalm 148. I'll invite you to turn there, find that on page 724, and I'll be reading this. You can follow along or or just lift up your eyes and your ears to listen as I read God's word. Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you stars of light. Praise him, you heaven of heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He also established them forever and ever. He made a decree which shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all the depths, fire and hail, snow and clouds, stormy wind fulfilling his word, mountains and all hills, fruitful trees and all cedars, beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying fowl, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all judges of the earth, both young men and maidens, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above the earth and heaven, and he has exalted the horn of his people. The praise of all his saints the children of Israel, a people near to him. Praise the Lord. I don't know if you're like me, but the subject of angels fascinates me. It's something that runs throughout all of Scripture, and it seems to come to a, a a concentrated ed in the incarnation of Jesus Christ. Just think back as as to appearances of angels. There was an angel that appeared to Mary to announce the birth, uh, the coming birth of Jesus Christ. Then an angel came to Joseph to confirm that. And an angel appeared to Zacharias to do the same thing and to tell him that his wife would also have a baby, John the Baptist. And while shepherds watched their flocks by night, suddenly an angel appeared to them to tell them about the birth of Jesus. And that angel was joined by a whole army of angels praising God in the heavens, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. As I mentioned, I've been enjoying this Christmas season to take the praise of the New Testament and weave it together with the praise of the Old Testament because the coming of Jesus Christ is the focal point of all of Scripture. It is all about how God sent his Son to save sinners. That's why Jesus was born. In this case, I will be uh, taking the words from Luke chapter 2 and the praise of the angels and looking at them from the lens of Psalm 148. And in both cases, in both the Old Testament and the New Testament, there are angels that appear praising God, giving glory to God in the highest. And they praise him because of Jesus. Very explicitly in uh, in the words of those angels in Luke. And so too in Psalm 148, as the psalmist speaks of the horn of salvation that is lifted up, that's Jesus. The angels and all of the universe and all people everywhere are called to praise God because of Jesus. So today it's my purpose to say that Jesus was born to save you from your sins. And he has saved you so that you may praise him. 
The outline is fairly simple. The angels praise the Lord, and you praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, all his angels. That's where this psalm starts. David calls all of God's angels and even the heavenly creation to praise God. Well, that just poses, uh, poses a question. So just what are angels? The Bible tells us in other places that angels are spiritual beings that God created. They were made to serve his will. The very name, the very name angel can be in, interpreted as messenger. So there are lots of places where you see the angels carrying the word of the Lord to announce to those that are are here on earth to hear it. I like the way that Hebrews 1 gives something of a summary. There it says that God makes his angels ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation. There's that idea of God sending his messengers, carrying the word of the Lord, In that context, he says the angels have a role to play, but there is a higher messenger. There is the Son of God himself who was sent to announce that salvation has come in him, and that's Jesus. But here we see the angels carrying messengers, and Psalm 104 calls them flames of fire that do his will. And Isaiah 6 describes the angels as having some human features, like like hands and feet and faces, but also having wings by which they flew, and wings by which they they covered their faces in, in the presence of a holy God. We're not told much more about what they look like, but I think I can safely say that they are not the cute little babies, the cherubs with wings that we often think of. And I can say that because almost without fail, when an angel appears, the first words that come out of their mouths is, don't be afraid. Well, that suggests that there's a reason why, when an angel appears, that the people were afraid. And we're going to see that as we connect these words with Luke chapter 2 in just a little bit. But that's what they said when they came to the shepherds by night. Do not be afraid. So apparently, the presence of an angel can be a terrifying experience. Cute little baby with wings? Uh, Not so terrifying. Holy messenger of God, a flame of fire sent from his right hand, surrounded by the glory of God, proclaiming his message to you. Now that's a reason to be afraid. And it makes the hair on the back of the neck stand up. And it makes... These shepherd tremble in the presence of these sinless spiritual beings sent by God himself to tell them his message. There's an interesting reaction to the angels as well that comes from the Apostle John. You remember that in the book of Revelation that when John was confronted with an angel that This sinless being prompted him to fall down to worship the angel. But the angel corrects him, right? The angel says, don't do that. Worship God. The angels themselves know who is to be worshipped, who is to be praised. The angels themselves direct you to praise God alone and to bow before Jesus. And Psalm 148, David does something similar. He calls these mighty, sinless beings to praise the Lord. 
Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Or as the angels said to the shepherds, glory to God in the highest. David also mentions the sun, moon, and stars. He calls all of the created order to bow before the Lord in praise to him. You see, David correctly understands the cosmos. He understands the, the universe and the meaning of the universe. He understands that they are all called into being by the word of God. Both the word that is spoken that is described in Genesis chapter 1, but also the word made flesh that is described in John chapter 1. That is Jesus himself, once again, speaking as the agent of creation, speaking, and the worlds came into being to the glory of God. And they exist, and their music goes out to the ends of the earth, says Psalm 19. It's a music that can be heard so that all of the created order is without an excuse, says Romans chapter 1. God's invisible attributes are made known by all of this because the heavens declare the glory of God. And it is this Son of God, this Creator God, this divine individual that has become man he is the one who is entering into his created world so as to accomplish salvation. David says the entire universe bursts into praise at this. That the angels and the heavenly hosts are assembled because the focal point of the gracious purpose of God is coming to fruition. It's as if the angels crowd around to get a glimpse of this anticipated work of God. You see, the angels knew Jesus before he was born, didn't they? They knew the triune God, Father, Son, and Spirit. And they were gathered around him in that heavenly sanctuary, praising God, even as the temple of the Lord was shook at the presence of God, and, and, and the fire and smoke of his being filled that heavenly temple. And the angels around him never cease to say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. And now, at his appearing, they burst out in praise. They can't hold back the praise that fills the sky with a glorious sound. You can't help but be struck by this moving scene. It is a scene that is filled with the sound of heaven itself, the sound of angels praising God, the birth of Jesus Christ. And it is a sound that highlights the extreme contrast of this scene that we, uh, we are, are, are seemingly so familiar with. He is born in a, in a very low place, place that speaks of human poverty and, and a lowly existence. It speaks of, of being born to a, a young woman that is not a princess or a, a queen and in a location that was not a throne. It's often been, uh, been marveled at that, that, that the king of kings would be born and lain in the feeding trough of a, of, a man, of a manger. And this is the Son, Jesus Christ. And the contrast of the heavenly praise just highlights the beginning of poverty, but the glory of his purpose of coming. 
So think then of the, uh, of, uh, of the shepherds who are witness to this and the words that the angels speak to them. They come and they do indeed say, do not be afraid, for I bring you good news. Do not be afraid. Angels sometimes did carry a message of judgment, right? There was an angel of death that passed through the land of Egypt and visited the judgment of the Lord that would free his people. The book of Revelation speaks of the trumpets that sound and the angels that speak and proclaim the judgment of God and that pour out the bowls of wrath on this world. But this angel had a mission of mercy. And so he comes and he says, do not be afraid. I bring you good news. Literally says, I'm evangelizing you. It's the word that we have for evangelism, good news. And that's what he says to the shepherds. I evangelize you. There's good news today. What is that good news? Is that Jesus is born today. That Jesus, who is the Savior, Christ, the Lord. This is one of only a few places in the New Testament where Jesus is given the title Savior. And the, uh, the smallness or the, or, or the infrequent use of this title serves to really highlight it as something that is very precious to us. It highlights the fact that this is indeed why Jesus came, came to save us from our sins. And his majesty is further highlighted by these titles that are given to him, Christ The Lord, Christ meaning Messiah, the anointed one, the one that's anticipated all throughout the Old Testament. And Lord, the title which is is used to speak of the deity of the Old Testament. So all of these titles highlight that Jesus is God himself in the flesh. And if this wasn't enough good news and wasn't glorious enough, enough. then suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, good will towards men. Just stop and think about that. Once more, those things that are common to us, uh, we... We tend to to downplay. They they don't strike us as maybe the first time that we heard it. But but listen again, that at first there was one angel, and then all of a sudden the sky was filled with an army of angels. One angel was enough to be afraid. Can you imagine that? The whole heaven filled with an army of angels and the unearthly sound of their voices lifted up to praise God for the birth of Jesus. That's something to to meditate on. Something for you to, to think about and to hear that praise of the angels given to the Lord. As they praise God, all of heaven resounds with that glory. The Psalm 148 says, all of the earth resounds with that. The second half of, of the psalm speaks of, uh, of, the, of the trees and the oceans and the mountains and the animals all praising God. But More than that, Psalm 148 not only calls the angels and the created universe to praise God, but it also calls you to praise God for Jesus. 
Verse 11 of Psalm 148 says, Kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all judges of the earth, both young men and maidens, old men and children, let them praise the name of the Lord. For he has lifted his horn on high, his horn of salvation. I'll just remind you that that's a phrase that speaks of Jesus. And you can hear that. Uh, look back at what Zacharias praises God for, and you'll see the horn of salvation that is lifted up, the coming of Jesus Christ. Psalm uh, uh, 148 and verse 11 gives a group that clearly includes everybody. There are kings and judges and princes, people of high and noble birth, we might include in that, in that gathering presidents, congressmen, those who are of high authority in, in our country. But the praise comes not just from, from those rulers and those uh, uh, of noble birth, but you see common individuals as well. Men, women, and children, and, and old men, all coming into the presence of the Lord. The application is simple, is it not? Jesus was born to save you. And he has saved you so that you would praise him. You'd be hard-pressed to find yourself excluded in that that group of individuals that embraces everybody from around the world. Because in Jesus, there is no Jew or Greek. There's no slave or free. There's no male or female. We are all one in Jesus Christ. And we're all called from whatever nationality, from whatever state of birth, from whatever state of attainment that you have achieved, you are all called to praise the Lord Jesus, who is the only Savior. In Christ, we raise our voices together as redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. We give honor and power and glory and dominion to him forever and ever. This is the point of Jesus' birth. He came to save you from your sins by laying down his life on the cross. Today we will be celebrating the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. And these verses and this purpose of Jesus orients us to understand what it is that we are doing today. It orients to understand that this is why Jesus came. That his body would be broken, his blood poured out, so that your sins would be forgiven. We often approach this with a certain sobriety and an awe-filled quietness. But today, I hope that you would hear the music of the heavens in the sacrament as well. The music of the angels that is declared by the coming of Jesus Christ in the flesh to be our Savior. He came to save you according to his promises, a promise made long ago even as Mary remembers in her praise. He saved you so that you would serve him in holiness and righteousness all the days of your life, even as Zacharias notes in his praise. And he has saved you to praise him, even as the angels do, Psalm 148 says. So let me close today by asking you, Do you hear that music of heaven? Does the hair on the back of your neck stand up 
when you hear the unearthly sound of the angels' praise. Most importantly, let me ask, will you join that praise? Will you join the angels in heaven and the saints around the throne of glory, those who have gone before and those who will come, all assembled to say glory to the Lamb and glory be to God forever and ever and ever. Will you join? You may, you know, but you must be born again. You will not hear that music except through Jesus. You will not be able to say glory to God except by Jesus. You will find no peace on earth, no good will towards men, unless you find it in Jesus. And it is that invitation that is given to you today. Will you join in that music? Will you join in that praise? Then come to Jesus. Bow before him and lift up your heart and your voice to join in that heavenly praise. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, our God, so often we try to find peace in nostalgia. We try to find happiness in the things of this world, but it's fleeting. And our souls just seem to float from one thing to the next, like a ship that's been cut from its moorings. Oh God, I pray that today that we would hear that call of Christ, the call to come and bow before you as the only Savior. Now, Lord, I pray that we would recognize that call that has been made to the angels themselves to praise the Lord, a call that is echoed then as a call to us to praise the Lord. Lord, indeed, you have lifted up the horn of your salvation. You have lifted up Jesus Christ, our Savior, and he is indeed exalted above all things. Lord, we praise you that you have given us salvation, not to angels, but to us. You have saved us from our sins. And for that, O oh Lord, we will praise you today and tomorrow and the next year, and forever into all eternity, joining with that heavenly chorus, saying glory to God in the highest, on earth peace, goodwill towards men. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's sing these words, Psalm 148a. We will join our voices with that heavenly host to praise him. So 148A, please stand to sing.